hello hello everyone my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to today's video which is my July wrap up so I read a total of 12 books this July which was pretty good. I wasn't feeling like I was going to end up reading a bunch of books, but then right in that last week, I read so many books. Like, I was averaging a book a day for almost a week, which, <laughs> yeah, really boosted my reading at the end there. Um, a lot of them were library books. Majority of them were audio books. Um, so I only have three physically here to show you, which is kind of crazy, but we're just going to get into it. So the first book that I'm going to talk to you about is Gideon the Ninth, and this is by Tamsin Muir. Um, you can see there's still a bookmark in here, that's because my husband is reading it. He started reading it like a month, almost two, before me. And here I have finished it, and he's still only two-thirds of the way through. I, He's not the biggest reader. Um, he wants to be, and he used to be, but not so much anymore. But I also don't blame him because this book was slow. <laughs> I rated this 3 out of 5 stars. It was too slow for me. I didn't like how we were just plunged into the world and we didn't get any explanation. The kind of explanation we got was after something had like happened and we're like, oh, okay, I guess you can do that. Sure, why not? I just, I don't know. I, I prefer more info dumpy than nothing at all. Um, so, I, I should say what this is about. So this, to sum it up very quickly, is about lesbian necromancers in space. That is true. I didn't get too much of a spacey element from it, like a little bit at the beginning when they travel, but they're kind of just stationary in one spot for majority of the book. So I didn't get a whole bunch of spaciness in it, which is kind of disappointing. The necromancy was what I wanted more information on so I could actually understand it and enjoy it a little bit better. And then the lesbian part was fine. They, it's more like they have a history and they'll probably have something in future books, but I don't care to stick around for it. I liked our main character, I liked Gideon, and I liked Harrow, and I liked them together. But other than that, I just didn't really care much for the book. Not that it was bad, I can see why other people would like it. It's just not something that I personally enjoyed, and so I will not be continuing with like Harrow the Ninth and whatever the third one is. But yeah, it was just too slow. Didn't really care. The plot was okay. I just, it was not my enjoyment, so. Then I also read Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon or Nicola Yoon. I'm still not sure how to say it. This was also a three out of five stars. I also was not super excited about this book when I was reading it. This follows a girl who used to really love romance novels and just loved love and then um, her parents get a divorce and to her her whole world kind of comes crumbling down and then she ends up like magically being able to see when a couple kisses like kind of their love story, how it started, how it's going, and how it ends. So she just is like, nope, 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 nope. Love is stupid, not doing it. But yeah, I think I liked half of the book. I liked the dancing elements. She actually takes dance classes. She does, and then, and I liked the visions, but I feel like I didn't get enough of those two elements, which kind of were the two main elements that made this book unique. I didn't get enough of that. I got a lot of like the YA drama and just other elements of the book that I wasn't super excited about or I didn't find as interesting as the other elements. So like half the book really bored me and the other half was like, I want more of this to enjoy it. Um, like, like the family drama, like, okay, I don't mean to say that divorce isn't traumatic or something that should be talked about, like, that is not what I'm saying at all, but just the way it was handled in this book, I just didn't care for, um, it was just, like, so overdone, but, and, and again, that part of the book isn't 
something that's super unique to it. Like it's something I read in other books before. Um, and so it kind of just made me want to stop reading YA contemporary romance. I'm just kind of done with it. Like I just, with the drama that happened and like the age, it just, I, it just made me realize I am kind of done with YA contemporary romance. I can't do it anymore. It's too dramatic for the sake of being dramatic and it's kind of annoying. The other thing was that I had a hard time with the timing in this book because it went from like a couple days, then a couple weeks, and then a wedding is coming. But oh, no, the wedding is like here now. Like the time, it was just weird and all over the place. So, eh. And like the writing was fine. The characters were fine. Whatever. I didn't. And the last book that I have physically that I read is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. This was given to me by a friend of mine who was like, you need to read it. And I sat and I waited and waited and waited until summer so that I could read it. This basically is like Miss Teenage Dream pageant. Um, it's flying to a beach to, or like it's flying somewhere for the pageant. So it's one girl from every state in the United States. Um, and then their plane goes down on an island and now they kind of have to do like a survival thing. Um, except there are nefarious things happening on this island that they don't know about which was like okay it's, it's a very far-fetched book like the beauty queens and the survival aspect i enjoyed it was it was very hatchet kind of very a uh, lord of the flies but the nefarious other part of the book i was just like this is so eye roll and like like that comedic where they do just like a little poke and then it's like a whole punch down effect and the other person just uh, like like that kind of thing <laughs> but I mean the whole premise of it is just kind of funny too so I guess it fits but this was also three out of five I had a lot of three out of five star books this month it almost kind of gave me the feelings of WandaVision though because it was off-putting and very blunt which you know, I got those feelings from WandaVision, and I loved WandaVision. I didn't love it as much, but it was just very interesting. Because, like, they would have advertisements and other things to kind of help us get a sense of how their world is actually different than ours. Like, it's not our world. It's like a dystopian version or another parallel universe to our world. And it was very WandaVision in that way. There was a lot of really good rep in this book. There was trans rep, queer rep, cultural rep different kinds of things like that and it was an interesting message message about like just female pleasure in general kind of going from beauty queens what we t traditionally think about them like what's displayed in media about them and then kind of their transformation on this island growing out of that it was just very interesting i would say like be prepared but also have an open mind because it was just an interesting book not one that I would read again, like at all, but yeah, and like the romances in here was interesting, like, okay, okay. And there's not much more I can say other than describing it as interesting and a three star. So now I can get into all of the books that I read over audio. <laughs> I mean, I read all three of those with the audiobook. But I actually had the physical copy to show you. I actually read A Master of Gin, which was a leftover um, from June that I wanted to read for Queer for Pride Month. It was. It ended up being a 4 out of 5 stars. It won me over. It definitely had a bit of a beginning that I had a harder time getting into. Again, kind of just being thrown in. Uh, not really slow, but not as fast paced as I would have liked. But it eventually grew on me. Um, the characters are definitely the best part of this book, for sure. It was great. Um, the mythology mixed with, like, the mythology mixed with the multiple religions mixed with, like, our modern times was a really interesting balance, and I liked how they played out. I think it's definitely a best case scenario to some extent. I mean, it's not perfect, but, like, Looking at it compared to what I know it could be if it was something happening, it was definitely in much better shape than it could be, uh, which was really fun and clever to read about. Lots of female main power. I loved all the like female power of our main character who was like a modern woman, but then her kind of sidekick helper who like 
wore a hijab and was a little bit more traditional in her beliefs, but how she was just as powerful and awesome as our main character. Like that was really cool and very appreciated. The romance was better than I expected. I was expecting it to be kind of like a two, three star romance. You know, like it was there and I wasn't going to enjoy it or there was gonna be this twist to it. No, I liked it. I think it got better as the book went on. But again, I think that's just the book in general. I liked it better as I kept going. And then my final thought, um, it's the writing. It's like it's like that real writing where someone's kind of more talking, storytelling it to you rather than like a academic writing, which this book could have easily been written kind of more academically and been like had the same vibes and everything, but it was a little more loose and I liked that. I very much appreciated it. That's really what kept me going through the story, especially at the beginning when I had a hard time getting into it, so. Yeah, four out of five stars. It was, it was pretty good. I would recommend it. If you like gin and murder mystery and slightly culty, not super culty uh, books, I would recommend this for you. And then get ready for this. I read the Nevernight Trilogy by Jay Kristoff. I read Nevernight, God's Grave, and Dark Dawn all within like a couple weeks of each no like a week of each other like I read the first book and then I got the second book like a day or two later and then I read that in a couple days and then I got the third book like the next day or even at the same time as the second book and I, I just read the entire trilogy and I finally feel caught up and like understanding of a lot of things especially with Mr. Kindly I get it now I get it now people would always say Mr. Kindly was the not cat from Never Night and I was like what got it I got it so yeah I enjoyed them I gave Nevernight 4.5 out of 5 stars I gave God's Grave like a 3.5 almost 4 out of 5 stars I think it had a little bit of middle book syndrome but that also could just be me not caring much for middle book it just felt like it was an interesting story not start over but kind of felt like it because she gains all these fighting skills in the first book then she goes to the second book and she no longer knows how to do anything and she has to relearn how to fight but just like a different fighting style like i can appreciate the different fighting style but i just feel like so much of what we learned in the first book was ditched that also goes for what we learned about her species and the darkness i feel like a lot of that got ditched a little bit in the second book and we just went full blown with the gladiator thing and then all of a sudden at the end it was like okay now we need to actually get ready to wrap up the entire world so yeah and then, <laughs> and then the fourth book i also gave 3.5 out of 5 stars um dark dawn the third book did i say fourth i don't know dark dawn i gave 3.5 out of 5 stars it was just kind of chunky and like good characters but it was just long long and drawn out i was just waiting for them to just kind of do the final battle and be done with it and it just kind of didn't quite happen that way. And I wasn't super excited about it in that regards. But yeah, so for anyone who hasn't read the Nevernight series, I'm not going to give any like spoilers past like what I've said. I haven't really said spoilers, but it might not make sense. Um, the first book, I liked the writing. I like it breaks the fourth wall. Um, dear reader, kind reader. Just I kind of felt like we had a little bit of dropping of the plot at some point or forgetting what was important to the main character and her just kind of losing sight of what she's actually trying to do and the things that are important to her but I loved Mr. Kindly and it, it I think it was like one of the OG female assassins or like it feels like an OG female assassin book like this and Throne of Glass kind of were like start of the kick of badass female main characters so I appreciate that even if it was written by a man I gotta say all the female female there is queer rep there is female female love in the later books and those scenes for being written by a man were not bad for being written by a man not bad next uh, i read i read a couple of duologies start to finish i know it's like i don't need to do the continuathon anymore oh, i definitely do um because i actually finished some duologies for once uh, so I read Fable by Adrienne Young, and then I read the second book, Namesake by Adrienne Young. So that's the duology. First book, four out of five stars. Loved it. Second book, 
five out of five stars even better I feel like the critiques I had for the first book um, were fixed or improved upon in the second book which just made me all the happier and more excited and you know reading them back to back always helps too yeah like the romance grew on me I at first wasn't a fan because I felt like our love interest kind of treated her more like a little girl or a child rather than someone his age or equal um, and when his character was first introduced I wasn't aware that he actually was her age and that was going to be the love interest so then when that started happening I was like well I have to change my whole mental image and the romance felt really fast but I think that was because of how fast paced the book was like I don't know I just feel like the book took place over the course of like four days so for the romance to develop that much over that short amount of time felt kind of weird and well yeah just weird but I think it just wasn't written well of how long the book timeline actually was but I did end up getting on board with it. I love some more detail scenes and just kind of surroundings but in the end I got I got around with it. It was a great twist, great cliffhanger at the end. Um, sorry my feet are falling asleep so I'm just gonna get shorter and yeah so the second book everything was just better. The romance was better. The like how the politics worked and the resolution and just kind of everything playing into each other and the cleverness like it just felt like the game had gotten stepped up and I liked that and then I also read the 2.5 book The Last Legacy also by Adrienne Young so this book takes place in the same world following a family that is mentioned in the second book following like the character that is in the second book that we briefly see and I feel like it was very separate like you do not have to read the fable duology in order to read the last legacy but it's just nice because you get a little bit more uh, information of how the gem trade works and I really I initially was gonna save this duology and then also other book for August kind of to do my hot girl summer vlog because it's it's not piratey but it's like summer themed it's you know it's sailing and swimming and things like that you know very summery activity so I thought I was gonna save it and then I had no patience and I read it anyway so yeah and I think last legacy I liked a little bit less that was a little more of a like 3.5 I think um, romance just didn't quite hit the same as the first one or as in the duology and it was just it was a different kind of story and I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a different kind of story or not I didn't I don't think I wanted it to be but I think that's because I read it so close but I also just didn't want to forget anything so yeah and then they've got book number zero for this coming out later this year it's called Saint and I will read that I'm very excited it is the father the, of fable um, and yeah his story so I'll, I'll read that just because I liked the author's writing and storytelling and it like I said it was just so fast paced which I greatly appreciated then I read I read the daughter of the pirate king duology so daughter of the pirate king and daughter of the siren queen by Patricia Lovenseller because I have been wanting to read more Trisha Lovenseller because I have started to read her and I've been loving her books like The Shadows Between Us and One with the Sword, Blade of Secrets, loved them so I knew I really wanted to read this and again I was gonna save it for August for Hot Girl Summer because it is pirates and swimming and just you know it's literally a female pirates of the Caribbean but again I had no patience and I zoomed right through it like this was the duology that I just sat on my bed with nothing to do for hours listening to it because I was so entranced in what was happening in the book I didn't need to go for a walk or clean or do something to kind of keep me focused on it I was enthralled the whole time I was just sitting there listening I loved it five out of five stars pretty sure both of them were I think I like the first one more than the second one because I think the banter between our enemies to lovers characters was so 
good. It was so consistent. Basically, the entire first book was banter between these characters. Like, there was a plot. She was trying to get something off of his ship. He was trying to get answers from her about the Pirate King. But majority of it was just them bantering, being enemies, and then falling in love. And it was so good. Like, it gave me Reed and Lou vibes from Serpent and Dove from the first book. And I loved that book. I loved that romance. So just, like, that style of, like, she does things her way. He is kind of goody two-shoes, but he's also a pirate in this one. So, like, as goody two-shoes as a pirate can be. Um, and I just... Oh, I could not get over how wonderful it was. The characters, the plot, the world building, it was all so good. And then the second one was good. I think we got a little less of the romance and banter from the first one. And I felt like we kind of just, not dropped it, but it just became more plot heavy of why these characters were together in the first place. It's like, okay, now that they got what they need or didn't get what they need and like things happened, now we can progress with what they were actually supposed to be doing and kind of leaving the romance behind a little bit. So I was kind of saddened by that. But the plot was good. Like, the, I was then interested in the plot. I just knew that there was also a romance that could have, like, enriched it. Enriched it a little bit more. So I think that's one of, if not my favorite, read of July. Actually, I can say with confidence that... Daughter of this Pirate King was my favorite read of July. Yes, there you go. So yeah, I read. Those are all 12. Oh, I did a lot of series. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, I started and finished quite a few series, which I'm kind of proud of myself for because I never do that. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching this strange July wrap up. I hope you ha are having a great summer or winter if you're in the southern hemisphere. Hi, have fun. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, let me know what are some of the things that you have been doing this summer that you've been enjoying or some of your favorite books or least favorite books that you've read in July or what you're reading in August. Honestly, tell me anything about your reading lives. I would love to chat with you, get to know you, get recommendations, talk about books, etc. and so forth. You can also do that with me on my social medias, which I have linked down below. Bookstagram, book talk, book Twitter, book the other one, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Goodreads. I have Goodreads. Yeah, I, I, I think that's it. Uh, so you can follow me there below and we can chat more about books there as well. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, feel free to subscribe. I make videos theoretically on Sundays and Wednesdays this summer. I'm not really sticking to that schedule quite as strictly as I do during the school year. In the school year, I'm usually very good about getting videos up on Sundays and Wednesdays, but just because of how the summer has been so different for me and how, how it's been going, I try to do two videos a week, but I make no promises. <laughs> but hopefully with me quitting my second job soon, it will be a lot easier. So anyway, yes, thank you for watching. Have a great summer or winter. And I will see you all in the next one. But until then, happy reading.